Well, hello, students. It's me, Mr. Wagner. Uh, we need to talk about some weathering. That's what we need to do today, and that's what we're going to do. So, I'm going to show you a few things, and then I'm going to ask you some questions uh, after that. So, there's a quiz at the end. Please pay attention. Let's see what we can find out. Um, the first thing that we need to talk about, of course, is mechanical weathering. Let me move this over here. In fact, I'll move it right up here. Mechanical weathering, remember we said we can also call it physical weathering because things are physically touching whenever like rocks get broken down or anything like that. So things must be physically touching in order for that to happen. So we've got like this <laughs> machine going crunch, crunch, munch. And it's physically breaking those rocks down. Things are physically happening. That is mechanical weathering. Don't worry if you're a fan of um, chemical weathering. We'll be talking about that later, too. One kind of mechanical weathering is ice wedging. Take a look at these cracks in the rock here. Let's just suppose that we have water getting the cracks of the rock. And the water, whenever it freezes, it expands. So here it says liquid water gets into the cracks of rocks and freezes. And the water expands when it freezes. When it expands, it pushes the parts of the rock a little bit further apart. I don't know if you've ever done this before, but have you ever put a can of Coke inside the freezer too long? Kablooey! It just explodes, right? It's because the liquid inside there, it expands whenever it gets frozen. It's the same thing that happens inside a rock, or it happens inside mud puddles or something like that. Anyway, another kind of mechanical weathering is root wedging. Take a look at this tree here. It says, I destroy you, rock. It's got these roots, and the roots are growing in the cracks of the sidewalk. And when it grows in the cracks of the sidewalk, it's breaking the sidewalk up into pieces. It is weathering the sidewalk. It can happen on a very small scale with small plants growing on top of rocks, or on a big scale like this, where you've got trees breaking up uh, sidewalks and stuff like that. Anyway, let's keep going. Another one is animal actions. The behaviors of animals are responsible for breaking down rocks. So you think you have things like gophers, woodchucks, things like that. They're digging in the ground. As they dig in the ground, now they're exposing new rocks. Or sometimes um, some animals like actually dig into the rock itself, not the dirt, but the actual rock. Um, like some parrots do that. They actually dig holes in certain kinds of rocks. I forget exactly what kind of parrot it is, but um, that's one way. Another kind of mechanical weathering is the release of pressure. Let's just suppose this area right here, it had tons and tons of earth on top of it. It, it had layers and layers of earth. And for one reason or another, I don't know why, but those layers of earth got removed. They got eroded. They moved to a new location. Now this is almost like cracking its back. It's like um, got all that pressure off of it, so it's starting to like um, release some of the pressure that it had above it. Um, and now it's starting to flake off. So it says when layers of sediment and rock above have been removed and the rock begins to flake off. And this is saying, ah, oh, that's so much better. Another kind is abrasion. Abrasion is whenever wind or water or ice is carrying sediment particles, and those sediment particles are smacking another larger rock. You can see here, look at this. It's got abrasions on it. It's got scrapes because it's been scraped slowly and steadily. It says when rock carried away by wind, water, or ice scrape away at other rocks. Do you want to see another abrasion? That's an abrasion. It's a scrape. An abrasion is a scrape. Maybe this has happened to your knee or your elbow or something like that. An abrasion is a scrape. So it's two things physically touching, scraping against each other. All right, great. Well, now that we've uh, covered mechanical weathering, it's time for us to move on to chemical weathering. Chemical weathering is the process of breaking down rock through chemical changes. If you look at this GIF right here, you can see a chemical change happening. We've got two things that are chemically combining and it's making a new substance. That's what a chemical change is. So you've got two things chemically combining, making a new substance. So uh, in this case, though, for chemical weathering, it's got to be chemical changes that break down rock. One example is water. 
Water can actually go through the ground because the ground is permeable and so is many kinds of rocks. So the water goes through the ground and it starts to dissolve things like calcium. And then when it dissolves things, um, it builds up on the underside of caves and things like that. So water sometimes dissolves rock. Um, look, water dissolves some of this rock. And yes, that is awesome that water dissolves some of the rock. Another thing can be oxygen. Oxygen can chemically weather stuff. When oxygen chemically reacts with iron and other rocks and elements in rock. So this is not rock. I understand that. This is a car. But we can see that the oxygen is chemically weathering this car. What does it look like on a rock? It looks a little bit like this. The rocks get rusty when they have iron. If you remember going through Ohio caverns, in Ohio caverns they had a bunch of rocks like this and they were stained rusty red because there's iron in those rocks and as the water goes through the iron in those rocks it starts to stain them kind of a rusty red. Um, let's keep going. Um, next, carbon dioxide. This is just kind of a, a fun gif. <laughs> uh, that's good stuff. Carbon dioxide creates a weak acid when it's dissolved in water. So carbon dioxide, of course, is what we breathe out. But carbon dioxide comes out of volcanoes. It comes out of cars. It comes out of factories. And the carbon dioxide gets into our atmosphere. When it mixes with uh, water, it can make rainwater. But the carbon, di the carbon dioxide itself um, can break down rock. And I'm showing you another example of carbon dioxide breaking down rock, but that's also in caves. So the carbon dioxide is in the water, and it starts to weather away some of the rock in the water. And you're probably weather the rock in the cave. And you're probably thinking, I thought that was water. Carbon dioxide and water can work together, too. Um, let's keep going. Another thing is living organisms. The roots of living organisms like lichen produce a weak acid that weather the rock. So here we've got lichen. It's really, really colorful. And it's a plant. And the plant is growing on the rock, but the roots make a very weak acid that break the rock down. Granted, it's going to take a long time, but these plants are going to break this rock down into smaller pieces. It's going to weather it down. That's another example of chemical weathering. And that is pretty neat. Now, it was really neat. Let's keep going. Um, another thing is acid rain. When carbon dioxide, remember the stuff that we breathe out, the stuff that comes out of volcanoes, the stuff that comes out of factories, the CO2, when it mixes with the air, it creates a weak acid. It creates carbonic acid. And granted, like I said, this acid rain is not going to hurt you but over a long period of time, it's going to start to eat away at certain kinds of rocks. Here's a gargoyle, a statue that usually is on the side of old buildings. In the gargoyle, you can see that it's kind of like wearing away at its face um, because of the acid rain. So most likely it was the acid rain that, that caused that to happen. And <laughs> it is spooky. Yes. Yes, we'll make it go away. Relax. Just relax. All right. So when it comes to mechanical weathering, we have ice wedging, root wedging, release of pressure, abrasion, and animal action. So those are the five kinds of mechanical weathering. Okay, so there's five kinds of mechanical weathering. Don't forget that. But also, when it comes to chemical weathering, we've got five kinds of chemical weathering. We've got water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, living organisms, and acid rain. We, I told you about each one of those things. So, now it's time for a quiz. Let's do a quiz, shall we? Let's get started. So, it says, what kind of mechanical weathering is this? Here we've got kind of a mud puddle, water in there. I got a feeling this is during the winter time. There's going to be some freezing and thawing. So, what kind of mechanical weathering is this? Yep, it's ice wedging. Ice wedging is what's happening. Uh, this happens all over Ohio during the, the winter time and the spring time as things freeze and thaw, freeze and thaw. It makes larger potholes. We've got some weathering happening here. What kind of mechanical weathering is this? Well, yeah, it's animal actions. You can see some animal burrows here. So this is animal actions. We've got animal burrows here and they're digging into the ground and uh, they're making holes and they're weathering some kind of rock. What kind of mechanical weathering is this? I'll give you a full view of the picture. 
you can see it, it looks like some stuff is flaking off almost mm, it is release of pressure release of pressure is what's going on here so the pressure is being released off the top and now we can see that some of the rocks are flaking off here so what kind of mechanical weathering is this well you can see some roots getting in here and this is root wedging so the roots of this plant are getting in between the rock and as the plant grows the roots swell and they get larger and larger which forces the rock further and further apart that's another kind of mechanical weathering what kind of mechanical weathering is this hint look at where it's at it's in a pretty cold area so in this case we also have ice wedging. The ice wedging, the ice is getting in this rock, it's breaking it down, and now we've got a lot more surface area because we've broken this rock down into a bunch of pieces. And um, now let's talk about chemical weathering. What kind of chemical weathering is happening here? We've got a statue, and the statue doesn't look like it probably originally did. It doesn't have the same detail. So what happened when it came to chemical weathering? Was it water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, living things, or acid rain? Well, take a look. It's actually a bunch of different things working together. It's got water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, acid rain. So when it comes to chemical weathering, it's actually several things, usually several things working together. And when those several things work together, that's what causes a lot of chemical weathering. So that's kind of tricky. It's not just one thing. It's several things working together. And that's most likely the case. So what kind of chemical weathering is happening here? In this case, we've got uh, the cave again. We've got some um, stalactites hanging down from the ceiling. Look at the, the people in the background. Um, what kind of chemical weathering is this? Well, kind of the same thing the things are working together. It's not just water, but it's water and oxygen and carbon dioxide in the water, which makes carbonic acid and slightly acidic rain. All those things together um, are, are causing the weathering uh, in this cave, which makes some pretty cool looking formations. Um, what kind of chemical weathering is this? You can see we've got some sort of plant type stuff here. Um, it's living things. So we've got living things here, like the lichen. Uh, remember, it's making um, a weak acid in the roots. It's actually making a, like a carbonic acid. So technically, carbon dioxide could go with that as well. So um, it's living things. This picture is actually a picture on Mars, taken by one of the, um, the rovers on Mars. So in this picture, look at the dirt. It's kind of reddish in color. Hmm, what could have caused that? It's carbon dioxide. So, is there oxygen on Mars? I think there is. But there's lots and lots of carbon dioxide on Mars. And the carbon dioxide is causing weathering here. That's kind of a tricky one. Um, but take a look at this. We've got a tombstone here, and you can barely read what's on the tombstone. Um, you can't read it at all, as a matter of fact. What kind of chemical weathering is this? It's another one of those things, it's several things together. It's water, carbon dioxide, acid rain. It's probably oxygen in there as well. There's a whole bunch of different things. Um, take a look at this. We've got really red dirt. And with this really red dirt, what's causing it to weather? I mean, yes, these rocks back here are breaking down, but what caused it to break this stuff to break down into smaller pieces? Um, it's water and oxygen because when the oxygen mixes, with the iron, it makes kind of a reddish color. Well, I hope you did pretty well on the quiz. I don't know if you did or not. But now we know about mechanical weathering. There, you can see my hands. Mechanical weathering and chemical weathering. We got those two out of the way. We've looked at a bunch of different examples. And I hope mechanical weathering and chemical weathering is a little bit more clear for you. Anyway, have a great day. Eat your vegetables.